now we're going to talk about non-coding RNA. In the previous video, I discussed uh, coding RNA and, how, and the central dogma of science, which are of molecular biology, which states that DNA goes to mRNA and then mRNA goes to protein. But remember that DNA is 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 a vast is a is a very vast uh, sequences of nucleotides, and and they don't always code for mRNA. They can also code for different RNAs, and these RNAs are are responsible for for maintaining these metabolic reactions in our bodies. And 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 just to reference to translation, we're going to talk about the importance of non-coding RNA. And in the last video, I did mention I mentioned uh, heterogeneous nuclear RNA, and I and I promised you guys I'll tell you how immature mRNA is is or heterogeneous nuclear RNA goes to mature mRNA. And this is not this is a topic for another video because we have to understand the importance or significance of non-coding RNA. So non-coding RNAs are functional RNA that are not translated. That just means that these RNAs are not mRNAs. They're not messenger RNAs. They're different kinds of RNAs and they have their own own important important roles. And here are two very important uh, non-coding RNAs. The first is a tRNA, and you might be aware what the tRNA does. It's the transfer RNA. It carries amino acid from the cytoplasm to synthesize polypeptides in the ribosome. And before we talk about ribosomal RNA, we want to. I just want to throw out a very interesting fact. How many different tRNA molecules do you think our bodies have? Our bodies have. Uh, at least 20 different tRNAs. And you might be, uh, you know, wondering why that's the case because we have 61 coding codons. So how do we have, how do we have so many different, t uh, just 20 different tRNAs when, when we have, when we have 60 different codons? And this is answered in the next video. You should search it up. Uh, it's called, uh, it's called uh, uh, Wobble Base Pierce. Uh, but just focus on this video at the moment. We have uh, the next kind of uh, non-coding RNA we have is the ribosomal RNA. The ribosomal, ribosomal RNA is a reference to the ribosome, which translates during translation. And we know that we should, we should know that the ribosome is not a prepared complex that just jumps onto the, just lets the mRNA come inside like a, like a, like a maze, like a tunnel or something. But it's a complex that's synthesized or made at the spot through a lot of proteins coming, or a lot of enzymes coming together, and RNAs coming together uh, to to make it happen. But the rRNA is the ribosomal, or the RNA part of the ribosome complex, and the RNA contains, uh, you know, our, our ribosomal RNAs are, are in our human body. We have the 5s, the 5.8s, the 18s, and the 28s. And you might be asking, what does this s refer to? It's the set it. It's the Sedberg's sedimentation rate. And it just refers to the rate of sedimentation in centrifuges. And if you don't know what a centrifuge is, it just spins, uh, it just spins, uh, it just spins uh, these uh, tubes and, and it just allows the sedimentation to happen faster. And of course, we have different rates of sedimentation because it depends on the size of the protein and whatnot. And the, the S is just a reference to that sedimentation rate. We also have ribozymes. Ribozymes are enzymes which are able to perform specific biochemical reactions like protein enzymes. It just it's a cat catalytic enzyme. It's also used in RNA, rRNA. So these are the three important kind of uh, three important uh, non-coding RNAs we have to know. But but there are other 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 small RNAs we can also talk about. But before we do that, I just want to mention that you know these ribosomes are very very important in the sense because they have the capacity or they're capable of performing these uh, these cat catabolic reactions, or yeah, they they, they kind of initiate the entire the <laughs> catalytic enzymes. I've written that here already. Okay, so there are other kinds of there are other kinds of uh, non-coding RNAs, and we have small nuclear small nuclear RNA, which is made up of 100. And again, we don't need to memorize this even for the MCAT students. We don't have to memorize this, but it just it's good to kind of like have an understanding of what they are, because when when you see them in future videos, 
and what they're doing inside certain processes, you will understand, oh, that's a small uh, nuclear RNA right there, so I know what that is. So a small nuclear RNA is, co is composed of 150 nucleotides and is associated with small nuclear ribosome. Oh, wait, small nuclear RNP, which stands for ribosomal nuclear particles. That's written over here. Small nuclear, uh, small nuclear ribos, ribonucleic uh, particles. Uh, I've been speaking for three hours, I think, straight. So that's why I'm kind of tripping now. But this is involved in the maturing of HN or heteronucleic RNA. We, we, this is going to be talked. See, just like I said, this is going to help you understand how that happens. We also have miRNA, which is microRNA, and siRNA, which is small interfering RNA. These are post-transcriptional regula regulations, and they increase and decrease translation. And we have the PIVI, PV. I don't even know if this is PV, but this is how it's, uh, I, I'm just going to call it PIVI, interacting RNAs. And these are 21 to 31 base pair sequences, and they work to stop transpons metabolizing uh, or <laughs> mobilizing, I, I meant to say. And uh, this is one of the mechanisms used to stop transposons from jumping around. And we talked about how bad, or, or not bad, but uh, what transposons can cause uh, all these mutations. We talked about that in, that in previous videos. And then we have long non-coding RNAs. And these have many, many functions. And they initiate complex on, on one, one example function of the of non-coding RNAs initiation complex on promoter during transcription and post-transcription regulation of splicing uh, heteronuclear, heteronuclear RNA. So this is, splicing is, a, is, I think, our next topic, and this is when we discuss how these immature mRNAs, or heteronuclear RNAs, converted to mature mRNA, which is then transported to the cytoplasm for translation.